Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, we are still on our LJ project. We're towards the end of the finish line here. Uh, today we're going to be doing our uh, HD over the knuckle steering kit on it. We've got our JK super heavy duty uh, inch and three eighths solid uh, tie rod. And we've got our over the knuckle drag link. This is a Heim joint kit. So everything's out in front of us. Um, we've got the stock jk tie rod in now just so we were able to bolt stuff together so we're going to get that out in our previous video for disassembly for the long arm we got rid of that super janky tj lj stock steering and then we're going to get rid of this uh this fabulous steering kit with all that flex in it this is going to be a beefy upgrade i'm excited about it we're going to get some high clearance out of it um and we're going to decide what we're going to do with the steering stabilizer kind of after we get everything installed. So let's get the old tie rod out of there and start assembly on our new stuff. So we're gonna assemble our parts on the bench, um, anti-seize, so we get easy adjustability later in life if need to, or if we gotta swap this out with a replacement, don't wanna fight that. All right, so we got our rod ends are all assembled. We got our clamps loosely on there. Make sure you put your clamps on before your, your ends, otherwise you gotta take your ends off, put your clamps on the trends back on. So we're pre-assembled on the bench here. So we're good to go there. Um, if you received your tie rod with your axle, pull a measurement center to center before you remove it. And then you have a starting point. I wasn't that lucky. So we're going to have to just kind of pull off of here, start there, and then we'll get our alignment plates on later and we'll get it dialed in. So we're going to get our factory tie rod out of here. It's so easy. Yeah, they come off just like that. <laughs> Tie rods out of our way. Just want to show you guys. These are our custom built bolts here in Shakopee. Instead of having to put a tapered sleeve in, our bolts are machined with the sleeve on there. So all we got to do here, pop it in our knuckle, holds it in place. We're going to do a washer and that side's ready to go. So now for the drag link bolt, same style. It's got our built on taper. It's going to be the longer bolt in the kit. Flop it up, tap, tap, no washer on that one. Time for the tie rod. Come on, baby. That wasn't supposed to happen. Washer. Castle nut. Five eighths bolt, washer, castle nut. So we're gonna snug up our clamping hardware on this side just so it's keeping everything kind of oriented before we start doing any actual adjustment. When you're tightening down clamping hardware, you wanna go back and forth so that it tightens evenly. So drag link time, we're gonna put it on the passenger side first misalignment spacer there's a sleeve that's going to go inside of our heim joint drop that on misalignment spacer washer castle nut now we're going to swing on over here on this side we have a tapered sleeve we already have it installed in our pitman arm. It's gonna go small side in. You wanna unlock your steering wheel so you can move your gearbox as needed. We had to push it over just a hair to clear. Get our bolt dropped in there. We're gonna have a misalignment spacer. Heim joint, another misalignment spacer. Washer, castle nut. <laughs> So we got our tie rod installed. Um, we got both of our castle nuts on both sides are not torqued, but they are tight. Um, just want to talk about if you look, this bar has a bend, so it does have, you know, movement in it. That's a flex joint thing, but you want this bar level and you want to pinch down your tie rod ends or your time joints. Um, so they're resting on the bottom with this level, and then you want to tighten up your pinch bolts. So 
it is going to move a little bit. That's just the design of the heim joints, but you want this level when it's resting. So you want your bend going forward. You want to push down your heim joint. Make sure that's bottomed out and then tighten your clamp. So you want the clamp as far towards the outside, but making full contact with the powder coated bar. Get that snugged up. We'll do the same up top. So now we're going to show you how we orient. This is tight, so our bar isn't going to twist now. Um, we'll get this turned down. We're not going to clamp it just yet because once we get the vehicle down to ride height, we want to adjust our steering wheel. Nice and tight going down. And then you would orient the clamp how you want it. Just pay attention to the track bar. Get that clamped on there. We're going to wait because we're going to make sure our steering wheel is straight and you're going to adjust this double adjuster to get your steering wheel right where you want it. And then we'll clamp everything down. So we've got our Iron Rock off-road um, alignment plates bolted on. Make sure surface is clean. They're snug. They don't have to be cranked on. So this is going to help us get our alignment set. So we are right at 70 and a quarter on the front. And I am dead on at 70 and a quarter in the rear. So we are completely parallel. Um, if we needed to make some adjustments, we would pop off the castle nut, take this end off, rotate in or out, depending on what you need. If you can't get it right at zero, it can be towed in just a hair. Um, yeah, we're good to go. We can get our plates off, get our wheels on, start torquing stuff. So we're going to torque our castle nuts. These 5 8 ones are 105 plus some to get your cotter pit in. So, but we need a base of at least 105. So just want to point out a few things here. As you can probably tell, this one's unpowder coated. This track bar is actually a prototype for this swap. So by the time video launches, um, these will be on the list to be built and ready to bolt in for your guys' swap. Also, the drag link in this is a prototype. I think we're gonna make some minor adjustments to it. Um, but uh, yeah, by the time you guys are ready to order everything, we'll have a full kit. You'll be able to weld on your truss, bolt in these axles. So pretty exciting. We're gonna go beat on it here pretty quick. Make sure everything's gonna clear and work the way we want it to before we make that available, but we're getting close. So we've got the vehicle down on ride high. We got our wheels back on. We have the tires as straight as we can physically see them. And now we're just gonna adjust our double adjuster here to get our steering wheel straight. So it'll take a little bit of doing. The correct way to do this is Get it as close as you can, go for a drive, see how it's tracking and how your steering wheel is. I'm not gonna be able to do that because I'm still waiting on drive shafts, but we're gonna get as close as we can for now. You should be able to adjust this by hand. Adjust it, check your steering wheel. Once you get that all set, then we'll get our clamps on. All right, so we got our two clamps snugged up. Now we're going to come back and torque them, and then we'll check our steering wheel again just to make sure. So we got our clamps snugged up right now. We still need to torque them, but make sure you're orienting them and checking afterwards to make sure you've got clearance where you need it. If this passenger size will be at full stuff, make sure your clamp or bolt is not going to be hitting your radiator hose. We're going to have to check that here in just a minute. Yeah, I'm just going to torque these up and start checking stuff. So we finally got our install done. As you can tell, big clearance difference for ground clearance, beefy upgrade compared to that old stock tie rod that you could pretty much fold in half by your hand felt like. Once you're done with your install, go back, check your torque on your castle nuts, make sure all your cotter pins are in, make sure everything's oriented correctly. Don't forget about your pinch bolts. Make sure they're torqued. Check your clearances with all your clamping hardware. And then the last thing I want to talk about is make sure you pay attention to your backspacing. I'm running some wicked offsets on these just because that's what I've got right now. Eventually, when I go up to a 37, I'm going to have to get some 17s because it's going to actually narrow what I currently have. 
and then this would be an issue for clearance. These wheels will not work with that. So pay attention to that. I'm excited to get this thing out on the trail and actually test it out, but compared to what was in it before, wheeling on that, this is going to be a massive upgrade. So thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. We're almost done with this project. Got a few little things left to do, and then we can get it out on the trail.